Therefore, now time for members' statements. The member from Bruce Gray Owen Sound. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 27 years ago, this House declared April 6 as Tartan Day in Ontario in honour and celebration of the significant and many contribution of the Scottish community, who were among the first people to settle and help build this great province we're proud to call home. To Scots, April 6 is a special day, as it's when Scottish independence was declared in the form of a letter submitted to the Pope to confirm Scotland's status as a sovereign state. The Arbroath Declaration of 1320 also laid out a key principle on defending the Scots' freedom, and it said, it is, not true, it is in truth not for glory, nor riches, nor honours that we are fighting, but for freedom, for that alone which no honest man gives up, with, but with life itself. This principle was fully embraced and articulated by notable Canadians of Scottish descent, including Agnes MacPhail, born near Chatsworth in my riding, who championed freedom and self-determination while fighting for women's equal share in democratic participation. MacPhail became the first woman to sit in the House of Commons. It's a proud heritage that was also championed this House by another Bruce Gray Owned Sound native and former MPP, Bill Murdoch. Murdoch, as most of you know or have heard, is a true Scot at heart, and not because he gave into its own provincial tartan colours, but because he did not like being told what to do and always pounded on the partisanship in the legislature with the reminder that, and I quote, we get elected to speak our minds, and that's what I've always tried to do. I wear my tartan tie today to salute Bogner Bill and all things Scottish, and I thank all of you for doing the same this week as you pay respects to our proud and strong Scottish community in Ontario. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Hamilton East, Stony Creek. Thank you, Speaker. As the old folk song goes, this land is our land, this land is your land, from Bonavista to Vancouver Island. I think NDP MP Scott Duvall had this song in mind when he started out on his cross country tour to end pension theft tour. So far, he's been to Vancouver Island, Ladysmith, Edmonton, Saskatoon, and more, and he's not stopping. He's already started into the Ontario leg of his tour, planning to be in London tonight and Toronto tomorrow night. He's also planning uh, visiting many spots in Ontario, including Sudbury, Thunder Bay, and our hometown of Hamilton. After that, he'll be continuing out to the East Coast. Throughout the great tour, the message he has shared has been loud and clear. We need pension reform in this country. This includes changes to our country's lopsided CCAA and bankruptcy and solvency legislation. Too many hard-working pensioners have been ripped off, and we're not going to stand for it anymore, Speaker. I'm happy to be joining him tomorrow night at 7 o'clock at the United Steelworkers Hall in Toronto. If you're watching from your TV screens or in the legislature, consider this a formal invitation to come out to talk about much-needed pension changes. I've spoken out many times in this House for the need for better pension security for Ontarians. They certainly, this certainly includes Sears pensioners, Stelco pensioners, and many more, whose plans are both based in Ontario. We want to see meaningful commitment made by this province. This should include strengthened PBGF fund, which serves as a backup relief when applications go insolvent. Right now, the PBGF fund only covers pensioners up to 1500 a month meaning that many could be living below the poverty line if this happens. That is why I've always advocated the PBGF coverage for at least $2,500 a month. This type of upgrade is long, long overdue. Let's make our, sure our pensioners have a real voice in this province and this country. See you tomorrow night. Thank you. The member's statement, the member from Kingston and the Islands. Mr. Speaker, I'm honoured to rise today to celebrate the month of April as Be a Donor Month in support of organ and tissue donation awareness. Mr. Speaker, the daughter of a dear family friend was in a fatal car crash last October while working as an au pair in New Zealand. Angelica Lucas's bright life, her love of life itself, of children, animals, her infectious smile that lit up every single room that she walked into, her full and happy spirit was wiped out in a second. It is hard to imagine the Lucas's family's loss just as it is hard for us to uh, imagine the families of the Saskatchewan Humboldt Broncos hockey players. Angelica's heart was donated to a woman in her 40s, her lungs to a woman in her 50s, her liver and one kidney to a man in his 50s, pancreas and other kidney to a woman in her 30s, as well as her eye tissue. I would like to thank Ronnie Gapsby and Rachel Levy from the Trillium Gift of Life Network for your tremendous work and leadership. I'd also like to congratulate Shillan Labet of Kingston, who received TGLN's Advocates in Action Award this year. Every single one of us has the power to change and save someone's life. One organ donate, donor can save eight lives and, through tissue donation, enhance the lives of 75 others. Angelica's mom, Anne, encapsulated the importance of organ donation beautifully when she said, 
There's an amazing heart that someone has beating in them now. Her heart was so big. Be that change that you want to see in the world and take that two minutes, register at beadonor.ca and say yes. Thank you. Thank you. Member, it's the member from Haldeman, Norfolk. Speaker, we congratulate the Delhi Legion Pee Wee Rep team on becoming OMHAC champions. Playdown saw the Delhi Rockets face off against the Minto Mad Dogs, and with the series tied at two, game five was tense. Minto took an early 2-0 uh, lead that was left unanswered to the third, and then there was an incredible 12-minute rocket scoring frenzy, saw a final 4-2 win. The quarterfinals, uh, Delhi defeated Elmer in five games. The semis saw uh, East Lambton also fall to Delhi's Magic in five. And I uh, defeated MPPs, uh, Randy, Jeff, and Monty, the other Randy, uh, we can arrange some rocket jerseys to be sent up for some picks. Now, Speaker, I'm told this team, in spite of being down at times, they never gave up. They played their hearts out until the buzzer. Winning games at uh, 0.78 second, 0.8 seconds remaining. These comeback kids played the final game to a packed barn, and their victory still has the town of Delhi talking. Perhaps the team's success stems from the true camaraderie as summed up by veteran centerman Carter Dwinikevich. And I quote, they were like my second family, he said. We all support each other. We all do good things off the ice and on the ice and do what we all together. Sincere congratulations to the boys, the coaching staff, Steve Wasserman, Steve Griffin, Sean Hare, and Billy Hobbs. And it's uh, obvious they not only installed skill in the team, but also a genuine meaning of the sport. Thank you. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Nickelbilt. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to speak about WSIB practices and the sometimes catastrophic consequences on injured worker. In October 2015, minor Corey Langshear ankle was crushed, knees broken, lower back injured when a rock fall occurred on the ground. After ignoring the advice from his own doctor, WSIB deemed him fit to become a clerk and enrolled him in a college program. Mr. Langshear was not able to complete the clerk's program, but WSIB used this partial training to deem him compensation of $13.50 an hour when he used to make $51 as a minor before his work accident. He states, it has only been with the ongoing support of my family that I have been strong enough to stand up to the bullying that WSIB has inflicted upon me. Second injured worker, Mr. Laurier Chartrand. He suffered a head and neck injury in a mine. He had unbelievable pain in his head, his arm, his chest, but a head scan was always denied. He asked two neurologists assigned by WSIV if acupuncture might be beneficial. They did not answer his question. After 27 years of not being able to sleep properly because of the pain, his family physician sent him to a physiotherapist. He received acupuncture treatment, and after few treatment, his pain finally went away. WSIB tells, it deems, it doesn't lessen, it denies equitable access to diagnostic treatment. Speaker, WSIB is failing injured workers and needs to change. So Thank you. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Davenport. Thank you, Speaker. Earlier today, I was joined by the Premier and the Minister of Status of Women at St. Helens Catholic School in my riding of Davenport to mark Equal Pay Day. Equal Pay Day is a symbolic day when we recognize the paramount role that women play in our economy and the concerning reality that women on average still earn less than men. From my personal experience as a mother and the first female MPP for Davenport, I know that the steps taken by this government to correct the gender pay gap and the steps taken to get women back to work after a long absence are vital for the health of Ontario's economy. Our Gender Wage Gap Steering Committee's top recommendation was to invest in childcare. Since receiving that recommendation, our government has announced 100,000 new childcare spaces, and we are making licensed childcare free for children two and a half to four because access to affordable childcare is key to gender equality at home and at work. And I know that when I'm out in my community and I'm out knocking on doors in Davenport, this is exactly what families are telling me. I wanted to extend a warm thank you to Vice Principal 
Bucci uh, at St. Helens, as well as the coordinator of the Early On Centre at St. Helens, Antonella Totino, and to all the staff at St. Helens Catholic School for the warm welcome this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stanis, the member from Halliburton, Cortha Lakes Prop. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Today marks Equal Pay Day in Ontario, and as the PC critic for women's issues and as a PC MPP, I have been fighting for women in this legislature for many years. Last year, I called on the government to strike a special legislative committee that would work across party lines to develop amendments to strengthen the Pay Equity Act, but sadly, that offer was refused by the Minister of Labour. What a missed opportunity to work together to improve the lives of Ontario women and girls. It is especially unfortunate because 31 years ago, all three political parties in this legislature cooperated on the development of the Pay Equity Act, which ended up passing unanimously. Instead, after having sat on their hands for 15 years, ignored expert Shameful. recommendations from their own advisory panel and so? cut the budget of the Pay Equity Office to its lowest levels ever, this government Liberal tabled legacy. and then time allocated last-minute legislation that it's actually does very little to it's advance pay equity in this province. Mr. Speaker, Ontario women deserve more than symbolism, rhetoric and political games from their government on equal pay day. The PC party is proud to stand up for women here, here. and all the hard-working people of Ontario, and we're willing to match our words with real results. Here, here. Thank you. For the member, the member from Brampton, Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. As we bring in the Sikh Heritage Month and Baisakhi Day celebrations for 2018, I would like to take a moment to appreciate and acknowledge the hard work, struggles, and sacrifices that the Sikh community across Brampton. Ontario, Canada, and various parts of the world has made over the years. The Sikh community is committed, generous, and enthusiastic towards the progress of all Ontarians and that of our great province. The 200,000 strong community members are active socially, politically, and have achieved great success in diverse fields and disciplines. It therefore pains me when the mainstream media singles out a few from the community who may have, at times in the past, acted in a deviant manner. I see reports of the Sikh community being mentioned in a negative light post the India visit of our, of our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. People who have not read the history and sacrifice of the Sikh community are calling the community members terrorists. Let, let me be very clear. The Sikh community in Ontario and Canada respects democratic institutions have, and have always worked to strengthen these institutions. Members of, the, members of the community strive to uphold the rights and freedoms of all Ontarians. The community members have made in the past and continue contributing, contributing to the economic success of our great province. I'm not going to name anyone's names or discuss the fact, act of a specific individual or a small fringe group who do not in any way represent the Sikh community. Not just in Ontario and Canada, but a sizable population of the Sikh community resides in the United Kim Kingdom and the United States. In both the UK and USA, the Sikh community members have always ad advocated for freedom of speech and up upholding of democratic traditions and values. No one should pass judgment on the community based on the actions of one or a few in the distance past. The community shall always continue working to build a more prosperous Ontario and Canada. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Speaker. You. Further member statements, the member from Lanark, Lanark, Lanark and Addington. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, the 31st annual Ontario Elementary School Curling Championships were hosted in Calm Place this past weekend. Oh, really? 72 teams from across the province participating, consisting of over 300 young curlers, plus all their coaches, family, friends, and spectators. Everyone from beginning curlers to experienced players participated with teams seated into pools and each pool competing to find a champion. The tournament was split between the four sheets at the local curling club and the six new sheets installed over one of the rinks at the Carlton Place Arena just for this event. I'd like to extend my sincere congratulations to all the participants and especially mention the A Division winner, Team Aldham of J.D. Hodgson Elementary School in Halliburton, the B Division winner, Team Stratton of Harrow Public School in Harrow, here, here. and the C Division winner, Team Malek, also of J.D. Hodgson Elementary School in Halliburton. 
I'd also like to extend further congratulations to the tournament co-chairs, Brett Little and Rebecca Hughes, the Carlton Place Curling Club, the Carlton Place Arena, the Town of Carlton Place, and the many, many volunteers who made the tournament a resounding and memorable success. Thank you. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's therefore time for reports by committees. Reports by committees.